Could you tell us what your mother was like? Very difficult to sum up in a few words, mm -hmm. but I think the secret of her who she was comes through in the book, because um, although it is not autobiographical, um, nevertheless, um, much of the feelings of the characters, Adler and Rosie, um, are there in her, uh, represent her own feelings. Um, she wrote um, in English, the novel is written in English, she had, was competent in many languages, um, English, German, French. Uh, when she lived in Paris, she wrote for the Figaro, uh, she also knew Italian. And of course, the, having been at the gymnasium, the Schotten gymnasium in Vienna, she also knew Latin and Greek. Um, she writes at the beginning of, and it's there in Edmund's introduction, Ich bin geboren und getroffen in Venen. Das was deutsche Tal, wodurch ich werd umgeben. Het Österreichse, so Deutsch, mit sein sachte und soms raue Vokalen und enges Lecke mit <coughs> Medeklingen. In Sprach, die Chief kann sein, aber nur scherb, aber nicht mehr the town wherein you performed there. It was for me as opgroeid young, young men, the town from Goethe and Schiller, from Nette, from Wilke and Thomas Mann, from Kant and Schopenhauer, and the town wherein Reinhardt's Tourneerstücken were opgevoerd. But it was not the town from my kleine, direct and intime world as kind. This was Engels. And um, so you must excuse me if I speak in English most of the time, though I can also speak a certain amount in German. May, may I interrupt you because uh, your, your touch is uh, excellent and um, maybe we can just go back to uh, the fact, uh, the moment where the name De Waal entered the family. Um, where did um, Elisabeth meet? Hendrik de Waal. I read somewhere that they wrote each other love poems in Dutch, so that's another language that she uh, that she could speak, apart from the others you mentioned already. Maybe you, maybe we can start from there. Well, she learned, when she married, she learned Dutch because uh, she felt she ought to know Dutch and the Dutch family as well. The de Waals, of course, are uh, a Huguenot family, um, as there are many de Waals in. Uh, the Netherlands, not all related by any means to each other, because it's a Huguenot name, people who came from France uh, at the time of the revocation of the Edict of Nantes in the 16th century, and they came to the Netherlands, and they came to England, and uh, they needed a new name, and the, they were called de Waal, which means the foreigner, the stranger, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, we all know that we are descended from refugees. And so the refugees <coughs> in the background of our family and, uh, in Holland, and of course on my mother's side also Jewish refugees. Uh, so the fact that I work with a refugee center in, in uh, London now is really quite correct. Yeah, it fits, it fits, yeah. It fits. Um, <coughs> My parents met in Paris. Um, my mother was working there and was a journalist writing for the Figaro. And my father was working in Paris for his Dutch firm, his family firm, who were coffee importers based um, here in Amsterdam, uh, on, in the uh, lovely house on the Hendrik Kade in Amsterdam. <coughs> and uh, my grandfather was very indignant when they built the Central Station in Amsterdam because it sparked his view yeah, of the area. Yeah, that's was in his house, yeah. <laughs> and he had an office, the firm had an office in Paris, so they met there and uh, uh, 
they got to know each other and um, married there. And curiously enough, uh, because they were both, and my father was a, a Christian, my mother had become, through her mother, very interested in Christianity, though she was Jewish. Um, so they decided to go uh, to a church together, and they went, um, surprisingly, to the Anglican, the English church at the embassy. That is why um, I was brought up, as all my children, uh, as a member of the Church of England, very surprisingly, and I am a priest of that church now. <clears throat> so we are in Paris, and um, uh, I read that they uh, they had a wonderful household there with all kind of new and modern things, and of course art as well. And then, I mean, the business didn't go very well. I understood. That's right. Um, uh, it was the time of the depression, and the business didn't go very well. Um, so, <clears throat> while my father was putting things together, uh, again, we went and lived for a while uh, in, first of all, in the Sud uh, in which was then German-speaking, of course. Still is, yeah. <laughs> Still is. Um, part of the then part of Italy, where the Italians were trying to make it more Italian That's without right, success. Yeah. Um, and uh, then we lived later on in Ticino, in the Italian part of Switzerland. And it was from there... With the whole family, with your, uh, yeah, yes, my, with your father? My, well, my father still came and went a, a bit. It's, it's kind of unclear from, from the book of Edmund. Yeah. It says that uh, Elizabeth goes with the children to Olga Bolson and then, and then later to Ticino. That's right. And we, we don't really hear about your father. Maybe we yeah, but he was, went yeah. backwards and forwards trying yeah. to organize him his life and his, his, his business. And it was there, in we lived uh, there in, first in Oberbotzen and then in Ascona. And, in, <coughs> and it was from there that my mother made this very adventurous and brave expedition to Vienna at the time of the Anschluss. Was it in 1938 or In later? 1938, the time of the Anschluss, which you, and if you read Edmund's book, you will know what happened to the, 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 my grandparents at that time, which was terrible. And my mother went with a Dutch passport, therefore she was reckoned to be safe. She went to Vienna, leaving us behind uh, with our kinder Freundin, and uh, went and rescued her parents. Um, it took a lot of doing. She had to uh, go to many bureaus of the Gestapo and get permissions and so on. Papers, paperwork, paperwork, yeah. <laughs> and finally, um, they managed, she managed to get permission for her parents to leave Vienna to go to their country house, which was a, a walk across the border in near Bratislava, uh, a, a family country house. And it was there that my grandmother died, but my grandfather stayed there. And of course, at that time, um, Hitler was threatening Czechoslovakia, and it was a question of getting him out of there. And um, meanwhile, we had come to England <coughs> for safety, and um, in, in March 1939, and um, we, all, my <coughs> mother and her family, managed to arrange through the. British Foreign Office to get my grandfather also to come uh, to, to England. Uh, in the 1930s, uh, we visited my grandparents in Vienna, in, the, in their big house there, the Palais in Fussi. And um, then, uh, so I got to know him then. I knew my grandmother better. She was a lovely friend to me. And then, uh, when he came to England, of course, he lived with us. Rather a, sad, a very sad old man. Yeah, that's uh, what I, as you yeah, can yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah. He still had on his uh, belt, he had the keys yeah, of his keys. library, yeah, yeah. which he had lost. It was his cape. Now it was his library. Um, so, of course, I knew him quite well. But we never really talked about what happened together. Children and grandparents don't you often don't talk about these things, especially mm -hmm. if there are tragedies in the family. Yes, we talked about that on the phone, on yes, Monday. Right. And um, what I actually will try, wanted to try to find out during this conversation, 
um, your mother, I mean, seems to me a very special person. That she she worked and worked and worked to get things back, but at a certain point, she apparently could say, "That's it. This is the most I can get out of it. I have to continue with my life." Um, how much of that have you sentenced? Have you felt, or were you not aware of what was going on? Did she talk about that? Did, did you? Did you see her different moods, or was she kind of like... No. She, she was yeah. very... Um, this comes very much in the novel. Yeah. I, 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 I want to make, of course, at a certain point, yeah. I want to jump yeah. to the novel again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, she had a very difficult time with the authorities um, heard in, in Vienna about establishing ownership of things. Because uh, at that time, in the night just after the war, it was still the occupation. The, uh, Austria was still occupied by the four powers. Um, we were very aware of her journeys uh, to Vienna, her, her, her attempts, and uh, to some extent successful attempts to get some things back. But she was quite clear that um, the past was the past, and she wasn't. There was no sense of nostalgia or anger or bitterness. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, because she wanted yeah. with her family, her children and so on, to live in the new in a new life. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so we never were aware of any sense of grievance or sorrow about that. <coughs> um, and of course it's been it was very important psychologically for yeah. for us as children. Could have been there, but, but uh, it was hidden for you, I mean, for, yeah. for you and for your children. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that, because she was like that. Also, as you will know, if you read Edmund's book, The Hair with Amber Eyes, you will know that she was not really very uh, tuned in to the social life of Vienna in her youth. She wanted to be a professional, she wanted to be a lawyer, she wanted to be a writer. She did not enjoy the social life of her family. Not the Kanaki Swarde kind of uh, things, no. And uh, yeah. that involved, of course, being very rich as they were then. So she, I, I remember her saying, I'm really rather glad we lost all that money because <laughs> we, can, we can now live a normal life. Without well, it all sounds very things. British, but she isn't. I mean, she's, she's from Austria in a way. But she, she was very, the, the, the family, <laughs> as you saw from that extract, the family. She had an English grandmother, and they all spoke English from childhood. In the oh yeah, that's true. You said you said the, that's the passage that you that you just read. Yeah. English was the language of my ch childhood. And in fact, uh, everyone, and <coughs> so uh, there were English relations as yeah. well, English cousins yeah. and so okay. on. So yeah. she loved England from the beginning, um, long before she she we came and lived there. She used to come to stay with her cousins in England and so on. So um, it was, uh, and became <coughs> very patriotic about England. Uh, though she remained, her, kept her Dutch citizenship right to the end.